Shabbat Shalom, everyone. Shabbat Shalom. Boker Tov. Boker Tov. Good morning. Let's start with a word of prayer. Avinu Malkeinu, our Father and our King, we thank you this morning for blessing us on this wonderful Shabbat. Lord God, this is the day that you have made. We rejoice and we're glad in it. Father, we thank you that you have given man a gift. You've given us a gift of rest. And that started with the day, the seventh day. After six days of creating the world, you rest on that day. And Father, today we enter into that rest, even into a new year of 5772. Father, as we learn to count the numbers, the days of creation in the weeks prior, Lord God, we thank you, Lord God, that today we can continue learning about Hebrew numbers. And Father, we thank you that Yeshua is the Lord of the Shabbat, Lord of the Sabbath. Father, we thank you that he's Lord even today, right now in our hearts. We pray, Lord God, that today we would realize that we weren't created for the Sabbath, but the Sabbath was created for man. And let this be a day of rest all day until sundown. We thank you and praise you in Yeshua's name for all that we will learn. Yeshua, Yeshua. Amen. Amen. All right. We've been learning about numbers, about our third week of looking at the Misparim, the Hebrew numbers. And I only had so many uh, outlines. If you don't have, if someone would like to share or look on with someone, we'll, um, we can probably make copies. Or I can give this one up when I'm done. Okay, so we've been learning about the misparim, which means number. Mispar is number. Misparim is numbers plural. And usually you have the, the im at the end of a masculine plural noun or ot at the end of a, ma a feminine plural. Okay, and now I just have to say, if you, unless you have a question, all talking has to be zero because everything picks up on the video. Okay. So please don't talk out of turn unless you're asking a question because everything's being recorded. Okay, so let's start with our numbers, um, our actually our alphabet. Um, for those that have the Hebrew booklet or those that are needing one, you can look on with someone and we'll just read what we call the Hebrewish. Okay, we'll read the alphabet one time through, just the 22 letters, and then we'll say our vowels one time through. Okay, Aleph, Bet, Gimel, Dalet, Hey. Vav, Zayn, Chet, Tet, Yud, Kav, Lamed, Mem, Nun, Samech, Ein, Pei, Sabi, Kuf, Resh, Shin, Tav. Okay, our vowels are? A, E, I, O, U. All right, remember, we're not using American vowels, we're not using the A vowel or the E vowel, but we're saying the A vowel sounds like what? A, E, O, U. E is what? E. Yeah. I is? I. E. E. We start again. A vowel is? A. The uh, E vowel is? E. The I vowel is? E. The O vowel is? O. And the U vowel is? O. Not U, but U. Very good. I, A, E, O, U. All right. Now. We've been learning about the numbers, and on this hand that I've given you from HebrewForChristians.com, great resource for a lot of grammar, and we've been um, supplementing some of the work that I've given you and that I've created with uh, some of their resources, okay? Um, one number we haven't learned is the number zero. We kind of started right with number one and went through ten, and then we worked from there. But the word for zero is ephes, ephes. So, in Hebrew, it would look like this. Or it could be spelled like this. Okay? So, here we have Aleph. We have the letter P. And we have a Samet. Okay. Okay. How do we read Hebrew? Which direction? Right to left. Right to left. Now, the first letter of the alphabet is what? Aleph. Aleph. And what did the Greeks uh, change that letter into? Alpha. Alpha. What's the second letter of Hebrew? Bet. What did the Greeks call it? Beta. 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 So they just added an A at those letters, so the Greek tongue is based upon the Semitic tongue or Hebrew. Okay? So we have the first letter, Aleph. Um, um, and this letter is a silent letter until you see vowel points, which we usually call the dots and dashes underneath the letter. So, what is the sound of the three dots that look like it's in a downward triangle? Three dots in a downward triangle. Eh, very good. It's an E vowel. 
Remember, we learned in our vol system, I'll write it over here, the A, E, I, O, and U in English becomes A, E, E, O, and U. Okay? Now, the vowels look like this. Pretty much, A vowels look like lines. Okay? So these are the three type of uh, vowel points that you'll see under a letter to make an A sound. The S sound is usually multiple dots. And I'm putting them in order of length right now. So we have two dots side by side, three dots downward, or look, what looks like a colon here, two dots um, a vertical. And so all of these are S sounds. So we have A, ah, we have E. Notice the difference. Normally anything with lines is an A ah sound. Pretty much anything with multiple dots underneath it is an E sound. You can just already guess that the multiple dots are an S sound. Why? Because if you think of these multiple dots, they look like multiple eggs. So think of eggs, eh, eh, eh. So when I see more than one dot, it's a what sound? Eh. What do I think of? Eggs. Eggs. I need everyone talking to me, guys. When you see multiple dots, we think of what? Eggs. Eggs. And what sound is that? Eggs. Eggs. So always multiple dots sound like eh. One dot by itself is what? E. Uh, so it could be followed by a U for the longest vowel. It could be just a dot by itself under the letter. And both of those are the I vowel, which is pronounced E. 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 That's why the double E. Okay? So either a dot followed by the letter U or a dot by itself under the letter. So one dot by itself is always an E. And think of the one dot by itself like when we say I, myself. I, myself. I'm alone. I don't have anyone else with me. So we have E for eggs, because it's multiple. We have one dot is E. And then for the O and the U sound, we're going to use the letter Vav. A dot on top is an O, a dot on the side is an U. The optional way to do that is just a dot floating in the air by itself, no Vav. And then three dots in a, a 45 degree angle underneath the letter um, can also be an U sound. So with the Vav, it can either be a consonant letter a V, or it could be used as a vowel, O or U, based upon the dot. How do we remember which one's which? If the dot's up in the air, what do we say? Oh, look at that bird in the air. Look at that plane in the air. Oh, it's high up in the air, so you have to make that O sound. But if there's a dot on the side, you ladies think of what? A purse. So you think a little purse on, on, her, on this consonant letter side here. And so what do you say when you see a nice purse? Oh. All right, let's try it again. Bird in the air. Oh. Purse on the side. Ooh. All the women will remember that, and men will think of that. Ooh, I got to pay for that purse. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, they'd rather see the plane in the air. Oh, look at that plane in the sky, right? All right, so we have FS, which is what um, zero number zero. zero. Okay, so we have. Zero. Okay. Now, we learned that there is two ways to write um, masculine and singular numbers. If it's a ma if it's singular, um, it's usually shorter. Um, we have words. I'm just going to write in Hebrew right now. Achat is what? One. One. So we have the number one. Okay. And how do you say it in the masculine form? Echad. Echad. Okay, it shows up in our lesson today. It showed up in last week's lesson. What was the first day of creation? How do you say day in Hebrew? How do you say day? How do you say day in Hebrew? How would you say good day in Hebrew? Yom Tov. So how do you say day in Hebrew? Yom. How do you say day in Hebrew? Yom. Again, how do you say day in Hebrew? Yom. Yo. This is all repetition. So how do I say good day? I add the adjective tov. tov. Yom tov means good day, a day that is good. How do I say good morning? Boker tov. Boker tov. Because what is boker? Morning. And then I add the adjective tov, good. Okay. How do I say night? Laila. 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 
Laila Tov. Sounds like a flower, right? Yeah. Laila Tov. Okay. That'd be a pretty girl's name, right? Laila. Yeah. Beautiful girl's name. And so, Laila Tov is good night. So, in, when, in, when you're talking about the word day, you use the word yom. So, in Hebrew, when we refer to the first day of creation, we call it yom echad, day one. The evening and the morning was the first day. Yom Echad. Okay? Now, normally we would not use Echad except for that uniqueness of the first day of creation. We would then use first day. Like the first day of the week. Yom Rishon. Rishon means first. Right? Literally the head of the week. Rishon. Coming from Resh. The letter Resh or Rosh. Head. The head of the week is the first day. So here we have Echad, which is what? Masculine. And then we have Echad, which is feminine. Somebody give me the, the masculine form for the number two. Shenayim. No. There's a Shva there. It all gets pronounced together. Shnaim. Okay. Nine. How do you say it in feminine? Nine. Say it all together. It is uh, Shva. Stein. Stein. Okay? So, masculine for one? Is that okay? Echad. Echad. Okay, what's masculine for one? Echad. Echad. Ha, ha. The back of the throat, you get a chutzpah sound there, right? Let's try it again. Masculine for one is? Echad. Echad. Not a K sound. Echad. Okay? How do you say it in feminine? Echad. Actually, I have a typo and no one corrected me on that. It's achat. Someone should have caught that. Achat. Okay? So we have echad and achat. Masculine. Feminine. Okay. How do you say masculine for two? Schneim. Feminine? Stein. No. Stein. Stein. Pronounce it as if it's one syllable because the shva here shortens it to where it's non-existent. Stein. So it's Schneim and Stein. Okay. Right. Feminine for two? Stein. 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 Okay? Right. Number three. Masculine. Well, let's start with feminine because it's easier. Shalosh. Someone want to try for feminine? Shalosh. 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 Okay. Okay. Um, how about for the number four? Let's see. Let's put our awesome. numbers here. We have two. We have three. What's four? Arba. 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 Okay. So we have Arba for number four. How about for feminine? Arba. Arba. Arba'ah. 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 Okay. How about number five? Chamesh. 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 Accent on the last syllable. Chamesh. How do I say it in feminine? I mean, I'm masculine. What is it now? Chamesh. Is it Hamesha or Hamisha? There's an I there, so it's not Edson. Hamisha, right? Isn't that what it is? Hamisha. Okay, how about number six? Shesh. Okay, this one's really easy, easy and feminine. Shesh. And how about in the masculine form? Shisha. Shisha. 
Shesh and Shisha. Okay, number seven. Shiva. Pronounced differently from Shiva, right? Shiva is the vowel pointing, and this is Sheva. And they're spelled with different letters, too. Okay, how do I say it in masculine form? Shiva. Shiva. Okay. Number eight. Okay, which one do we, what do we have now? Shmone. How about for the masculine? Shmona. Okay, number nine? Tesha. 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 Okay, how do we say it in masculine form? Tisha. Tisha. Okay, one more? Ten? <laughs> Not to be confused with FS, but Eser. And then we have what? Asara. All right. Now, let's take a look at the list of, it says here on the first page, Hebrew cardinal numbers. A cardinal number or mispar tells how many times there are in a set, for example, one, two, three, and so on. These are the numbers or misparim we use for regular counting. Properties of cardinal numbers. Cardinal numbers have two properties that you will need to learn. Cardinal numbers take both masculine and feminine forms. Masculine numbers modify masculine nouns. So if I have a masculine noun, what type of number should I use? Masculine or feminine? Masculine. masculine. It's like in Spanish or Latin-based languages. You have to match the gender of the noun. Whatever is describing the noun or modifies the noun has to be of the same gender. Okay. So here we have uh, the modifiers of, for masculine and feminine nouns. Cardinal numbers can occur in the construct state to indicate a link between the number and the noun it modifies. Construct numbers are translated as one of something, two of something, and so on. Because a construct state means the word of is used. If I say the Torah of truth, someone try to say that in here in Hebrew. How do you say Torah of truth. Torah emet. You say it all the time in the blessings, right? He's given us the Torah of truth, right? Baruch atah Adonai Eloheinu Melech Haolam Asher Natan Lanu Torah emet. Right? Torah emet. Torah is Torah of. It's in a construct state. It means you create a phrase, Torah of truth. How would I say Torah of life? Torah Chaim. Torah of life. Okay? So you would just add the word at the end for the modifier. So the same thing here. It's one of something, two of something. And you fill in what the something is. Right? Uh, so then it, let's jump down where it says numbers 1 through 10 with feminine nouns. The following list. Uh, the first ten numbers, the cardinal numbers of the feminine gender. So I'm gonna, we're going to go through these numbers here. What is zero? FS. What is one? Achat. What is two? Shtaim. What is three? Shalosh. What is four? Arba. What is five? Hamesh. Six? Shesh. Seven? Sheba. Uh, number eight? Shemone. Number nine, Tesha. Number ten, Eser. Eser. Okay. The numbers one through ten with masculine nouns, the following list the first ten cardinal numbers for the masculine gender. Zero, notice, is, doesn't change. It's zero. And what is zero in masculine? It's still FS, the same as in feminine. But when you get to number one, it changes from Achat back to the original Echad that we know from Genesis um, uh, the first day of creation. Number two on the next page is what? Schneim. Schneim. Okay. Um, so it went from Schneim to Schneim. Number three? Shlosha. 
Number four, Karbala. Number five, Kamisha. Number six, Shisha. Oh, she's Shisha. Number seven, Shiva. Number eight, Shmona. Number nine, Tisha. Tish, Tisha. Number ten, Asara. Okay. Now, the numbers three through ten in gender. The numbers three use opposite gender endings than you would expect. Why? Because usually the extra ah sound at the end of a noun indicates that it is what gender? Like Sarah or Torah or Yalda. It's feminine, right? When God changed Sarai's name to Sarah, it, he took it from masculine, meaning prince or leader in the house, to feminine gender, meaning that she is no longer my leader, Abram would say. Now, Abraham or Avraham would say Sarah, which would mean you're my princess. You're not my prince, you're feminized, you're princess. You're no longer playing the masculine role in the house. You are now submissive as the wife because I am no longer just exalted father, which I didn't fulfill that role. I am now father of many nations. And you have to be able to be in loving submission to me um, to be a father of many nations because you have to produce the children, Sarah. So I need you to kind of submit and not tell me to go sleep with Hagar, which that was a trap, right? Any woman tells a man, go sleep with your friend or your maid, you know, that's a trap. And a man falls into that and says, oh, sure, I'll go ahead and sleep with her. I mean, no, that is a big mistake. He should have fought, no, honey, you're my wife. God promised I'm going to have a child through you. But instead he went the male ego way of, oh, sure, I'll go ahead and sleep with her. And that was one of Abraham's problems, is that he didn't listen to the voice of God at that moment. Obviously, he repented because God still gave him that promise, his son, Yitzhak, or Isaac. Okay? So, if we look at it, what it says here, in the masculine numbers 3 through 10, you notice the characteristic ah ending. But not so with the feminine numbers. Thus, masculine nouns are actually modified by numbers that appear feminine. And conversely, feminine nouns are modified by numbers that appear masculine. So there's going to be a little bit of confusion going on in your mind because you're used to, to putting the ah with the ah. Right? Just the, like with the oat with the oat. If I say talmidim and I want to say good students, I say students by saying talmidim, which are disciples, right? If I want to say good disciples, what do I add? How do I say to? Uh, how do I say good in, in Hebrew? Oh. So, oh. how do I make it masculine? What do I add at the end? Im, ah. im, tovim. So I say, I say, talmidim, tovim. Why? Why? Because the adjective tov has to be not only masculine but plural. So you hear im at the end of a noun. You should have im at the end of an adjective. Okay. So how do I say, how do I say, female students or disciples? Not tell me deem, but tell me da. That's only one. Tell me da is one female student. How do I say female students? Tell me don't. We add ot at the end. O T. So um, we would say tell me dot to vote. Instead of tell me deem to vim. Okay? In Hebrew, everything is Connected, unified, and attached. You see the concepts in the noun. You see the same concept concept in the adjective. So that when you're reading Hebrew, your brain can quickly pick up, oh, we're talking about a male, we're talking about a female. Or we're talking about a masculine gendered noun or a feminine gendered noun. Now, why are nouns called masculine or feminine? Does anybody remember what the masculine refers to in a noun? Versus the feminine, like the Torah being feminine. It means we... Receive, receive the Torah because it's something to be received. The woman is the receiver. The man is the giver. The, the woman is the receptive uh, person in the relationship. The man is the active person, or he should be the active person in the relationship. God is called He. Why? Not because He has masculine uh, uh, body parts. Not because He's a man like you, uh, like uh, most of the men here today. God is not a man that he should lie. God is a spirit. And those that worship God is spirit and truth. Why do we call him he? Does it refer to masculine gender or genitalia? No, not at all. God is a spirit. When we refer to him as he, we refer to him as the active creator in the universe. It's not a male and female thing. So it's really incorrect to call God a she. Because it's not referring to gender. It's referring to who is in control. He. How I many know the man should be the head of the house? 
And when the man's not the head, what happens to the woman? She naturally takes the active role. She doesn't want to. She's forced to. She has to take care of her kids and her family. So men have to stop being passive. They need to be more active and aggressive to bring home, I won't say the bacon, but bring home the kosher chicken and bring home the money and bring home the resources. Man has to provide for his household and be the priest of his home. And when a man is not, then a woman has to work two jobs and a woman has to not be able to be home with your kids and all those things happen as a dysfunction in the home. How I many know Hebrew is the pattern for life? Yes. It teaches you from the, the first time that God created Adam and Eve, everything is controlled by that. In fact, if we have more, if we have male and female students in a room, would I say Tommy Deem or Tommy Doe? Tommy Deem. You just Tommy called me a woman. <laughs> Tommy Doe is feminine. If I have at least one man in the room, can I call him a woman? No, because no, of creation. God created the man first, then he created the woman from his side. So you, you have to acknowledge that one man, even if he's a boy. You consider one boy in the room, one man in the room, all of us will be talmidim, like in Spanish. We say muchachos, estudiantes, well, estudiantes doesn't work, but because it's just masculine and feminine for that. But if I say muchachos, it could refer to women in the room. But if I have no boys in the room, I say muchachas, girls. It's the same thing with Hebrew. One man in the room, you can't call him a woman. Maybe our politics should learn that, right? right? Men shouldn't be women. Women shouldn't be men. God created the man, then he created the woman. They have their own qualifications. Why is it that today it's the reverse? Men want to be women, women want to be men, or men want to treat women like they're a man, and men want to, uh, uh, women want to treat their men like they're women. It shouldn't be this way, right? Because everything goes back to Hebrew. Everything goes back to the Bible. Everything goes back to Genesis. And that's how we pattern a life. It's a book of beginnings. Everything starts with Genesis, right? Okay, so let's take a look at some combinations here. Let's take a look down at the bottom of the page. Number one. The number one follows the noun and agrees in gender, number, and definiteness. With the noun, it modifies. So if I say one daughter, what will I say? How do I say daughter in Hebrew? D-A-T is what? Bat. Bat, like a bat mitzvah, is a coming of age for a girl. What's a um, a coming of age for a boy? Bar mitzvah. A bar mitzvah. So we use the Aramaic word for son, bar, because he grew up in a time where Aramaic was the controlling language of the Jewish people, or the common language of the Jewish people, um, in conversation and family usage. So we use bar mitzvah. But the Hebrew word for son is what? B-E-N is Ben. So, Ben Echad versus Bat Achat. So, it even sounds perfect, right? So, we have Bat Achat versus Ben Echad. Look at that. At, at. Bat Achat and Ben Echad. How about one of the daughters in a construct state? Um, we have Achat Habanot. And that's because to say girls, you take the masculine word ben and you add the oat ending. You take son and you add oat. You don't take bat because then we would have batot and that just doesn't connect with the word, the concept of a daughter. So we want banot for, for girl, for daughters. So achat banot. Now, because we're saying one of the daughters, we're not saying, we're not using plural because we're only using the number one. So, there's no plural. So, one of the daughters is achat banot, and one of the sons is achad habanin. Excuse me. Achat habanot and achad habanin. How about numbers two through ten? Let's take a look at example. Your page got a little bit cut off. Let's just look at number three. How do I say three sons? I will start with what? Shlosha, because this is masculine, but I'm going to take banim, which is plural. So that's what throws you a little bit. We're going to have shlosha, which is masculine, and we're going to have the masculine form for sons, banim. So it looks funny, right? Because I would expect that this a ending sounds like it's a feminine ending, but remember, numbers in masculine look feminine. 
It's just the way it is. It's just something you learn. Only with the number system will you find this. So we have Shlosha Banim. We have three sons. That's just something you have to memorize. You have to memorize that masculine nouns have an ah ending on numbers three through ten. Okay? Um, let's see. Let's look at one more. How would I do seven sons here? Shiva. And then we're going to have again bunny. Okay? So I'm going to throw one out at you. Five sons. Five sons. Uh, five sons. Hamisha. Hamisha. Bani. Very good. Right? Um, how about five daughters? Hamesh. 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 Banot. Five daughters. Remember, Banot is is the uh, daughters. Okay. Um, how about one daughter? Achat, one daughter, not daughters, one daughter. Achat, bat. Achat, or excuse me, you have to reverse it. You have to say bat, achat. Bat, achat. You put the, when it's plural, you put the number at the end, but, um, or put the number in the front. But here we have, we have to say daughter one. Okay, Okay, alright. Um, one more. Um, four sons. Four sons. Very good. Okay. Three sons. Very good. Um, three daughters. No, it's very good. Told me out. Alright, guys. I think you've, you've mastered it. All right, what I want you to do for next week, to turn in some homework, I want you to try to create a sentence in a Hebrew. You're going to turn it in with your name and date on it. Whatever you want, I want numbers in it. So if you want to say, um, if you want to say, three boys are studying Hebrew or four girls, why don't you use studying or learning Hebrew? So what, what's the verb for learning Hebrew? I would say for masculine singular, lomed. I would say masculine plural, lomdim, right? For feminine, I would say lomedit. And for feminine plural, I would say lomdot. Okay? So it's either going to be one of these you're going to use for next week. You're going to use the verb lomed or lomdim or lomedit. And you can look this up online too and find this. Um, Lom Jot. So, masculine singular, masculine plural, feminine singular, feminine plural. So, obviously, you're going to have to, to um, take a sentence like this. We would say, what? Shlosha Banim Lomdim Ibrit. Perfect example. See? I said three boys are learning Hebrew. Hebrew is what? E. Ibrit. So I want you to practice that, but you pick the number for next week and you tell me if it's bin or bat, and you tell me if it's banim or banot, and you put the appropriate masculine or feminine number to it. Okay? So I use the example shlosha uh, banim. That's a perfect sentence. Three sons are learning Hebrew. Okay, so try that for next week. Obviously, the new students attempt it, but I'm not expecting you to master it yet because you're brand new to the class, okay? Let's close in prayer. Avinu Malkeinu, our Father and our King, we pray, Lord God, that we would master the Hebrew language, Lashon HaKodesh, the Holy Tongue. Zephaniah 3.9 tells us that you will restore a pure language back to your people. That was the language of Hebrew from Adam to Noah, from Noah to Abram. And Abram became Abraham, and from Abraham to Yeshua, we have the Hebrew language. And from Yeshua to his disciples, as his disciples became apostles, 
and we have become disciples of those apostolic teachings. We pray, Lord God, that we would come into this language that the apostles used to preach the gospel to the Jew, and Father, be able to spread this language to the whole world, not only to Israel, but to the nations, as we study Torah and walk in the footsteps of our Messiah. In Yeshua's name we pray. Amen. Amen. God bless you. Shabbat shalom. Shabbat shalom.